going on, everybody? This is going to be the uh, YouTube walkthrough for MCDS 2.6, 2.7. So let's get started. Um, picking up from last time, we have a digital signal and we have a little bit of noise. You can see that over here. And when we add noise to the digital signal, although it does modify the sound, it's really easy to like filter. It's really easy to still... Um, be able to figure out what the actual digital signal is because a digital signal is just based on two values of zero and one. And even though that we have like a background in the noise, it's still very easy to see. This is a zero. This is a one. This is a zero. This is a one. This is a zero. So that's one of the advantages of using digital signals. Um, why are digital signals more reliable? And why are they uh, preferred to be used to encode and transmit information over analog? And it's kind of just the same thing that I just said. Um, the noise is easy to filter. And we can filter without significant deterioration to the original information. Even when we transmit over long distances from like outer space, um, we're still able to figure out like the different like zeros and ones. And we're able to... Um, figure out the original information, even with the noise added. So there's only two values for the digital signal and noise can be modified to filter out. Noise can be filtered out. Um, next question for the section of digital storage. Um, what represents the zeros and ones on a DVD or CD? So in a DVD or CD, you have these uh, little grooves, kind of like a record. And the uh, pits and lands, the zeros are the pits, so right here. And the lands are these little spaces in between the pits. So that determines what will be the uh, zeros and ones. Again, the pits and the lands. And why does a DVD not work in a CD player? Well, it's because it wasn't designed to uh, um, decode that type of information. And that answer is just right there. And overall, why does noise ultimately not affect the information of a, a recorded signal? And again, it's just because digital signals can easily filter out the noise. And this is true for like your phone. That's why you're able, able to easily understand somebody on a cell phone because it will isolate your voice and reduce the amount of background noise. So next we move on to 2.7. In reading through 2.7, we have um, two instances with the digital telescope and the uh, digital thermometer of how scientists use these tools to collect data. And then down here, we see a um, few other examples. We have digital sensors that are used in particle accelerators. We have digital signals that are sent by the uh, Mars rovers. And then also digital recording equipment that record digital audio that can help in the ocean. And overall, how does a digital thermometer, such as uh, this one, why is it preferred over a analog? It takes the temperature faster, it's more accurate, and it's more convenient. And basically that information can be sent anywhere. If we were to look at a uh, analog thermometer, we'd have to actually like look with our eyes or have some sort of camera record it. Whereas a digital one, we can have these, these signals Bluetooth to our phone, stored in the computer and sent over the internet. And with smart thermostats and smart thermometers, you can actually tell lots of different information for the different temperatures of your house or the different um, cooling or heating mechanisms that are inside of a house. The last section, all you're going to do is just complete one chart below. Pick between online learning or in-person learning and just list three pros and three cons. And then also just a bottom statement of which one you prefer. You can do this for uh, streaming episodes versus uh, cable or television, a digital book versus a hard copy of a book, 
and going to the movie theater versus streaming a movie at home. Just pick one side and list the pros and cons and which one you prefer. Make sure you complete all this work. Submit the document and get the points that you earned. Keep working hard.